So this video will be my top 10 tips for reaching monetization fast. I know a lot of people are searching right now on how to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. First tip to growing fast is being consistent. I know a lot of people say that, but it's a strategy to this. Repurposing content strategy, AKA doing reaction slash review style content. Now, by doing this, this is a creative way to repurpose other people's content and basically fill in the blanks of times that they're not uploading to satisfy their fans with content. And let me just break that down a little bit more. So let's say somebody has a favorite YouTuber that's inside of your niche. Now this YouTuber, they might be, you know, if they're at 100K plus, they don't upload that often. So now let's just say you can make content in between the content that they're uploading to satisfy that market. So let's say if they drop a video about this, you can find a way to do a review on that video or some way to incorporate that video into your content. So that way when people are looking for content from that creator, they might have the opportunity to find your video and it'll be relevant to them. Now the second tip that I recommend is, this is something I call breaking the YouTube algorithm. In my first 30 days, I was able to reach 3,000 subscribers. I was able to do this by dropping 12.4 videos a day. Now, it was more to this, but I feel like that's a, a number. If you just dropping that many videos back to back to back, eventually the algorithm, I have to figure out where to put these videos. So you got to just keep dropping. And that'll also help you with your consistency if you target a certain amount of videos that you want to upload to each day. Now, it doesn't have to exactly be 12.4 videos a day, but just get the, you know, just the understanding of finding a certain amount of videos to create each day and staying consistent. I see a lot of people out there dropping two, three videos a day, and they think that they're being, you know, consistent, but that's not consistent enough if you want to shortcut the time that it'll take to get there. Because think about it. Let's just say it takes X amount of time and service. So let's say the amount of videos you got to put in before you get to this point. What you're basically doing is cutting that time or, you know, shortcutting that time by creating more content. Also, what you're doing is getting yourself more familiar with the camera. You're getting yourself more in tune with certain things. The third tip of mine that I recommend is called the big fish in the small pond versus the small fish in the big pond. Now, a lot of people, when they start off on YouTube, they right away get the idea of, I want to do something similar to my favorite YouTube creators. Now, what I would say to that is, that's a highly competitive area generally. So, it's smarter. What I did was went and targeted a market where it wasn't a lot of big fish. It was a smaller pond. That way, once you take over in that area, you are considered a bigger fish. Instead of trying to be, let's say, uh, my example was instead of providing content directly for the United States, I targeted other countries because, you know, it's, it's crowded here. It's a lot of people that's already so far ahead of the game doing what I'm attempting to do. Number four, picking a niche. Find something that aligns with something that you're passionate about. It doesn't have to be exactly a passion, but just make sure that it's something in alignment with what you're trying to do. So that's one way to pick a niche. If whether you're in the beauty and hair industry or whether you're in the marketing entrepreneurship industry, another thing that'll help you out is figuring out which software that you're going to be using. So you want to make sure you got something that you can streamline, your editing, upload, and process with. Something that make things as simplistic as possible for you. You know, a lot of people think you got to use iMovie, all these uh, Premiere Pro, all these exclusive programs before you get started. I started off using simply Windows Movie Maker. Now, this is very important. You know what I'm saying? People you want to have a spot like where you can come straight in and get straight to your business. You don't want to have to come in, set up, figure out how you're going to get the camera angle this way or that way. You want to have everything already set up. So all you got to do is, you know, it's just like going to work. You sit at your desk and go straight to work. That's how you want to make this. Habits, that's another important thing we got to touch on. A lot of people talk about being content creators, but don't have the habits of a content creator. You can't be saying you want to upload a video this day, that day, then you'll never upload it. Other habits are being on a continuous journey to learn. With this YouTube journey, you'll run across so many different technologies and tools that will help you like VidIQ, Social LA, TubeBuddy, things like that. You have to learn how to use these programs as well, but don't get discouraged in that process. I'm telling you, everything is built on the user experience being easy. This is one of the other tips. This is probably tip number eight engaging with your audience this is super important you got to know how to properly engage a lot of people come on they just think they can do the video and they don't do any engagement you got to know how to build a name build, build a community around your channel figure out a, a channel name something that you want to call subscribers so when they come to the channel you can 
you can shout them out. They feel like they're being personally shouted out. So another thing uh, that'll help is live stream. You gotta learn a live streaming game. I see creators who've been on YouTube for years and have never been live. Being live will help you learn how to interact quick on your feet and give you that, uh, just that spice to your videos where if you learn how to entertain a live audience, once it's time to be on camera without a live audience, you can learn how to put some of that into those videos as well. Another important thing is taking requests. That is a thing that will help you make sure that you're in tune with what your audience wants to see. If you're making a video that somebody stumbled upon, that means they're interested in the subject or the topics or whatever you're talking about. But at the same time, in that video, if you tell them, hey, if you like this video and you want me to talk about something else, drop a request in the comment section. Now, if they and also let them know that you'll get to it as soon as possible, even in 24 hours, if they drop a comment when you first start off. So once you do that and they see like, this person might have knowledge on this topic that I want to know about, and if I just drop a comment telling them what I want to know about, they'll have, they'll respond to it within 24 hours. Once you do that, you'll begin to build a reputation where people will start to look at you as an industry authority. When people are looking for a certain topic, they'll know just to go to you for it. Another thing is find, how to find the right content or content that is being searched for in the first place. So pick out a couple people who you want to follow behind or that inspire you and look at the type of content that they're creating and look at the titles they're using. Those titles they're using, they're, they most of them have done research to find out if that content is being searched for. So you can use tools like Google Insights, Google Keyword Planner. These will let you know the frequency certain words are being searched for. And by knowing the frequency some of these words being searched for, that just lets you know whether this will be a good video topic or not. Now let's say you're saying something about how to start a business. It'll show you, okay, 10,000 to 100,000 people search for this per month. So that'll let you know like, okay, more people are searching for this topic versus this topic. Competitor comment section recon strategy. Now this is one of my super, super secret tips that's gonna be able to, you know, blow your channel up immediately. This is a way to be able to provide content that, that your competitor's audience wants to see. Now you can go to their comment section, read the videos that people are telling them they that they want that creator to provide. And a lot of these creators are so busy or so big to the point where they can't get to all these requests. So now you can start looking through these comment sections, seeing which comments have the most likes on them or the most responses to, and make a video on that. And then drop a comment in there letting them know like, hey, I made a video on this, or hey, I'm, I go, I, I touch a little bit on this topic. But be careful with that because if you say something too, uh, that sounds like where you're just trying to bring people to your channel, the comment might get ghosted. It might appear to you that your comment is on there, but on the creator analytics side, it'll show that the comment is blocked. Basically, nobody else will be able to see it. So just word it carefully. Talk about something that's inside of that video that you liked or add value to that video. And then, you know, sneak in somehow that you, you know, that you touch on the same topic. Okay, equipment. So we're going to talk a little bit about the equipment you need. A lot of people say they need all these expensive cameras, lights. All this other stuff, you don't need all that. All you need is a cell phone with a decent camera on it, and pretty much that's all you need to get started. And access to the internet, editing uh, software, or even if you're making a certain type of videos and you don't have editing software, you could just keep that in mind and say, okay, I don't have a way to edit these videos, so I'm going to just try my best to make as little mistakes as possible. Now, don't worry about being too perfect because in the beginning, you're going to make mistakes regardless. You know, that's just going to happen. As you progress and make more and more videos, get more comfortable on camera, you'll be able to, you know, not make as many mistakes.